What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Jared Barnes Show. I am your host, Jared Barnes. It is December already. It is wild. Um, just to start off the show, would like to say it is a full barn today because we don't have everybody on the show currently anymore. Tyler has stepped down. Tyler will no longer be on the show. We wish him the best of luck in whatever he goes to pursue from here on out. Um, love Tyler. We will miss him dearly. With that being said, Nate and Micah are here with me today. Even though Tyler is not here and won't be in the future, we will still talk about the Ravens because they do have Lamar Jackson. Makes them a newsworthy team. Cowboys very newsworthy, and the Dolphins cannot beat Mr. Irrelevant. We will get to that here in a little bit. Maybe some of the biggest news of this week, though, just to start off in the NFL, is Baker Mayfield getting cut from Carolina and becoming a Los Angeles Ram kind of caught everybody off guard. I feel like nobody expected was that Monday morning the news to break that Baker Mayfield was being cut. Obviously, things in Carolina have not progressed the way Baker would have liked. They haven't progressed the way Baker's wife would have liked if you uh, follow her on social media at all. And they haven't progressed the way the Panthers would have liked. But either way, it kind of... The news, the way it was broke, was that he Baker asked to be released. Not They didn't cut him. He asked to be released. Carolina granted that release, and it immediately put him on waivers. On Tuesday, he was claimed by the Los Angeles Rams, and he's eligible to play immediately based on when they picked him up. They only have to pay him like $1.134 million. I don't think that's an exact number, but I do believe I saw that in a tweet, and I'm just going to roll with it. Not a lot of money to pay a guy that could potentially be your starting quarterback for the rest of the year because you lost your franchise guy in Matthew Stafford to a spinal contusion. Uh, not a great injury. Stafford, we talked about it in the last episode we were all together, concussed out a week, then gets concussed again. Turns out that concussion, bigger deal than anybody thought it was. He's now out for the year. L.A. left without a quarterback. John Walford recovering from injury. That leaves him with Bryce Perkins, who played versus the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, was that last week or two weeks ago? Rams are in a bad spot quarterback-wise. Rams have had the worst start for a defending Super Bowl champ to an NFL season. They're also probably going to have the worst season a defending Super Bowl champ has ever had. Uh, I don't think they're going to get a lot of wins from here. But sh shout out to the Rams for taking a chance on a former number one overall draft pick, a first-round draft pick, and the Baker Mayfield experience has make made it stop in L.A., and who knows? This could be a more permanent stop than people realize. Um, there's a lot of questions about Matthew Stafford's future in the NFL. And people have begun to wonder how much longer he'll play. His legacy at this point is cemented. He's a good quarterback. Some would say he's a Hall of Fame quarterback with his numbers now that he has a Super Bowl ring. I don't believe he's a Hall of Fame quarterback. Let's not just be handing Hall of Fame jackets out to anybody that walks on the street. Matthew Stafford, very talented quarterback. I mean, didn't win a lot of games. Was in Detroit, though, so tough to win games in Detroit. But at the same time, again, let's 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 not hand Hall of Fame jackets out to everybody. But Stafford's future is up in the air. You get a guy like Baker Mayfield, very talented guy. You know, maybe not necessarily what McVay wanted. Not saying that Stafford's retiring because that has not been said at all by anybody, but it's been talked about in a lot of media circles. And if Mayfield can slightly turn his career around, they're not going to have to pay him a lot of money. They could lock him up maybe two to three years to say he's going to be a backup, play a backup role, and then boom, he becomes a starter because Stafford retires. Then you have a cheap guy for two or three years. You can kind of fix maybe some of the roster issues that that team has when it comes to cap space and all the other things. But I think this is a move that they looked at for the future. And that, that future could either be with Baker or with the cons with the pick they can receive if Baker signs elsewhere and becomes a starter next year. So I think it's a great move by L.A. Um, Nate, how did you feel about the move of Baker to L.A.? Uh, to be honest with you, that was not the team I was expecting him to go to. I'm not exactly sure how the waiver works. I'm not, that wasn't entirely sure how that all worked. So I, I didn't understand why the Rams got him. I thought he was going to San Francisco because they have a definite need of quarterback, even though love Brock Purdy. 
uh, you know, he's an Arizona guy. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad that he's getting the start and I'm glad he's playing well. But they need a quarterback right now, and Baker Mayfield is a cheap option. Um, but I think that, um, I, you know, I think this is probably one of the bright spots for their future because, like, the Rams, to get that Super Bowl, basically sold all their picks. Uh, they sold all their cap space for the future, and they have no future, really. They were in a win-now mode. They won now. So, I mean, it's somewhat of a success that they won a Super Bowl. So that's a success in that book. But still, they're not great. Um, they're not going to be great for a little bit, too, just because it doesn't seem like that team is getting any better. And it's not like they have any cap space to bring anybody else in, nor do they have picks to bring in a young talent in. So, I mean, they're, they have a top five pick, and it's going to the Lions. If I'm not mistaken, it's still top five, right? I think it's top three. As of right now, it's the third pick in the upcoming draft. And for the Lions to get that with the kind of team they have in their building, you drop like a C.J. Stroud on the Lions team, like, wow, what a pick. Like, yeah. the Lions look like geniuses right now, and nobody would have thought that just, what was that, two years prior when they traded, or a year whole prior when they traded Stafford away? Like, massive move. Yeah, I, I think this is probably just a good move for their future in general. Because even if Baker Mayfield is a mediocre quarterback, he. I mean, he's, he is a mediocre quarterback. Statistically, this year, one of the worst starting quarterbacks to step on the football field. Yeah. I mean, besides uh, the Book of More Moms, um, Zach, Zach Wilson. Yeah, Zach Wilson. Um, but other, other than that guy, I think that Baker Mayfield has a chance. I mean, he was selected number one overall. Do I think he was supposed to be selected number one overall? Not at the time. I think the Browns had picks one and three that year. I think they should have gone with Saquon first. Let whatever quarterback go to and then pick another quarterback in the third. You know. Imagine if they take Saquon first and then Josh Allen, I think, third or fourth. Like, what a draft. Oh, yeah. And instead they end up with Baker and Denzel Ward. Great corner. Paid yeah. him already. Baker did not work out, though. Yeah, so, I mean, this, they're taking a shot. They don't have a lot of – they don't have a great outlook on their future. Uh, the Rams. So this is just a shot in the dark and saying, you know, we need something. He became available. And uh, I think it's going to be a great move for them, even if he's mediocre, because, you know, playing mediocre will get you picks eventually once you pay your dues to the Lions. So that's what I got to say. I don't, I don't think that really does anything for them, though, even as a OU fan and watching this guy play since college, he was a beast in college, comes to the NFL completely wrecks his career like he really them picking him doesn't do anything for their team at all because he has not been able to perform and he cannot actually whenever he went to the browns he wasn't able to do anything there and then he went to the the panthers nothing so i like them picking him i just don't see i don't see him doing anything for that team either so it's just gonna the change is gonna continue it's not gonna do anything i mean I honestly don't know what they'll be able to do because what their quarter their quarterback because Baker's going to be starter right. There's a chance so they play Thursday night this week, like they play literally tonight, the day this episode drops. They I put on the outline. Jeez, terrible on me. That's supposed to say the eighth. We're just going to pull that down right now. Just notice my mistake. Shout out everybody that's watching that noticed that. Um, so the day that we're recording this is the seventh. The day we're dropping it's the eighth. So I'm taking the overlay of the episode off what a shame because that thing was kind of nice but um so currently like he'll probably be the starter because right now bryce perkins is john wofford is the starter he's questionable and probably not going to play yeah. bryce perkins would then be the starter which would then probably put baker mayfield in the starting job they're they're starting wide receivers right now are vance jefferson ben scarra Skoronic, Skoronic, I think is how you say his name. He's a white guy. I mean, not to take any shots. Matthew Stafford targeted a white guy on like 90% of his throws this season. Are you racist, Matthew Stafford? You're not. I don't think. As long as you're not Kanye, we're okay. But, and they're, they're, their other third wide receiver is Lance McCutcheon. And then after that, you have Tutu Outlaw, Brandon Powell, and Austin Trammell. So they have no wide receivers that are good. Um, they don't have solid weapons. This is a team that's destined to lose. 
So I don't think it mattered who was going to play quarterback. Behind that offensive line as well, you're screwed. Like, good luck. Are they trying to make their team worse so they can get a higher pick? Is that? They don't have their pick. I'm, it's, what? They don't have their pick. Yeah, it would be the Lions. It would be the Lions pick. So no matter how many games you end up losing, like you're just helping out the Lions, like right, yeah. even worse. So this, I mean, I think this move is just a shot in the dark. That's all this was. Is you know, a quarterback that was a number one overall pick became available. Our team does not have a great outlook for the future. Let's just take a chance on it. Like we're not expecting you to be our savior, but I mean, we're expecting a little a little bit of something because what we have right now is not great. It's a shot in the dark. So hopefully it works out. You know, I'm rooting. I'm rooting for you, Baker. I mean, I I like Baker. I mean, he he's antagonistic. I mean, I, I like that. I mean, it's a better antagonistic face for the Browns than the current antagonistic face that they have currently. Um, Talking about Deshaun Cosby. Yes. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll we'll probably get into that later into the show. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm just I want I'm excited to see what he's gonna do in there. Um, you know, shot in the dark. We we'll just have to wait and see what he does. Yeah, looking forward to see what Baker does at quarterback for them. Yikes, can't control these layouts. It's tough. It's a new, new little thing for me, controlling layouts and hosting the show. But uh, we'll move on for Baker, though. Baker's gonna. It's definitely going to be interesting to see. He's a number, former number one overall pick, so he's going to get a lot of opportunities, though. This will not be his last opportunity to get a restart somewhere. So shout out, Baker, for just being a lucky white guy i guess moving on to a, a guy that's not a lucky white guy that lost his job this week titans gm john robinson great um <laughs> that's a great <laughs> thanks nate that's work i've been working on those i've been working on those um so john robinson lost his job this <laughs> this week and it just so happened to line up that he gets fired the week after his former wide receiver uh tears their secondary apart uh, a guy that he traded to Philly in A.J. Brown tore them up. And this, honestly, is probably one of the biggest things that led to Robinson being fired. Like, when you look at some other things, like, the, just this past offseason with the wide receivers that got paid, D.K. Metcalf got paid, Seahawks paid him. After they moved on from Russell Wilson and they didn't have a quarterback, they said, let's pay our wide receiver. Uh, Terry McLaurin, in an organization where the organization as a whole has been pretty much on fire since 2012, when they drafted RG3, um, Terry McLaurin got paid. Tyreek Hill gets traded and gets broken off. The Raiders, a team that doesn't have a whole lot of money, um, and supposedly are a broke organization, that can't fire their head coach because they can't afford to pay the next guy, supposedly. Um, they broke off Devontae Adams when they traded for him. Wide receivers got paid galore. And the Titans said, we got an aging running back. Why would we pay the next offensive superstar in our system and not just trade him away? That's what we should do. Poor decision, maybe. But, again, you know. We'll see how that pays off for him. I don't think it's good. Like, they put a wide receiver that they drafted this year in such a bad position in Traylon Burks because he's immediately going to be compared to A.J. Brown every time he steps on the football field. And what's worse is his stats are, like, eerily similar to A.J. Brown, his rookie year towards, like, at this point. And he's, like, built the same, and they, like, kind of play very similar style of football. Like, you look at some of the moves that John Robinson made as a GM. He traded for Julio Jones when... Julio Jones was coming off of injury upon injury upon injury and lo did not look like the player that he was. Julio Jones was there for a year and was gone. They cut him. And then I believe it was that same year he drafted a tackle in that draft to possibly be the replacement for Jack Conklin or be the future replacement for Taylor Lewan. And Isaiah Wilson comes in. He plays one snap. He plays in one game. And he's literally not in the league anymore. He was a first-round pick, though. He's a first-round pick that didn't get another chance. That doesn't happen all that often. First-round picks get chances. So, like, he hasn't made great decisions. And Titans owner Amy Adams Strunk said in a statement, I am proud of what we have accomplished in my eight years of ownership, but I believe there is more to be done and higher aspirations to be met. What have they accomplished in the, in the past like, besides, like, Marcus Mariota throwing a touchdown to himself, I mean, what have they accomplished as an organization? 
I mean, they've kind of rebuilt kind of from the ground up in her time there. I mean, you think about you think about the Titans in 2014 when she probably got there were in a bad spot. Like they were high enough in the draft to draft Marcus. Yeah. So they traded for that pick from the Rams, coincidentally. And I think that's cur- wow. Yeah, I'm shocked. I remember that to be honest. Good on me, but like the Titans were just not good. They they needed a franchise guy. Like the franchise has kind of turned around. They've been to the AFC Championship game, um, but like they haven't. Again, did they win an AFC Championship? No. Did they win a Super Bowl? No. What have you done? Not a whole lot, because I can't think of it. I mean, Vrabel won Coach of the Year, I guess, but like, then again, that's not the owners doing anything. But it's definitely interesting to see. You don't see GMs get hired midseason like this. I think there was some kind of a deal that was done that they were unhappy that AJ got traded, and it was more or less like, hey, if AJ tears it up on us, like you're you're out the door. Like that these players that you got on this team can't stop the guy that we we have been playing against in practice for years. You're gone. That's probably not what was happening. There was probably other things that led to it. Maybe you know there's some things going on in that organization. Offensive coordinator got a DUI. You know who knows? Maybe him and he, maybe he was a little close to the offensive coordinator. Maybe they had a little encounter, but who knows? I'm not going to speculate on that. Um, we'll move on, though, to a, another. We'll just talk about a wide receiver in the NFL that is a free agent that's drawn a lot of buzz, getting a lot of talk on every show, and we have to do it, too. Odell Beckham, because he was in Dallas. We got a guy in the room that's a Dallas Cowboys fan. And Odell Beckham has done his three really big visits. He started in Buffalo, and then I think – I don't think he's going to go there at this point because his biggest connection was Vaughn Miller. Vaughn Miller just getting put on IR. Season's over. Like, he won't be back for the playoffs. Nothing. Like, he is done. ACL is torn. He will not be playing. That was pretty much Odell's connection in the organization. Don't really see Odell going there. Uh, Then New York. New York's not really going to be a competitor. But if you listen to my video on uh, Instagram, that's kind of gotten... A little bit of views. People think that's what I said. It's never what I said. I don't think New York's a competitor. I just would have loved to see Odell back in, you know, the Big Apple. Because you know, he just fits the New York media. Like, he'd be perfect there. I don't think he's going to go there. And then the third team he visits is Dallas. And he's there on Monday. And, you know, they just get a massive win on Sunday uh, over the Colts on prime time. Where they 33 unanswered points in the fourth quarter. Stomped. The Colts. And then they go to a Mavericks game on Monday night. City of Dallas is chanting, Odell, Odell, Odell. Like, City of Dallas wants Odell. Odell wants to be in Dallas. Players on the team want Odell on the team. But Jerry Jones is a little bit hesitant. Jerry Jones is a little bit hesitant. It's kind of been leaked that Odell supposedly wouldn't be able to play till mid-January. And he supposedly told Micah Parsons that he would be ready to play in five weeks. If you think about, there's only five weeks left in the NFL season. I do believe. We're going into week 14, so 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, five weeks left of the NFL season. If he was signed today, he wouldn't be able to play till week one of the playoffs. What's he really going to bring to your team at that point? A veteran in the room, a talented wide receiver nonetheless, depth, a weapon, but you'd only maybe have him for, if you're not saying that Dallas would only have him for one or two games, because if you listen to Nate, they're winning it all, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. If you listen to Nate, they're winning it all, but Jerry Jones did not offer him a contract because of all this, and Nate, I just need to get your thoughts on how you feel about Odell Beckham. Um, I think, I said it before on this show, I think that, um, you know, he's someone that would be nice to have, um, but this Cowboys team does not need him. I think I've, I think I've made that clear. I think that this is a team that can win the Super Bowl right now. They don't need anyone else in order to win a Super Bowl. They're not one piece away. I think they are that team already, that caliber of a team already. Um, but concerning just Obo Dec- o- Odell Beckham and Ju- um, in general, I mean, I think you could bring some presence into the locker room. You know, I mean, it, it's it's a great public figure. I mean, you're playing for the star. You know, it's a great media media stunt. I mean, even for the Dallas Cowboys, right? Jerry Jones cares about money, and so somebody's bringing more money into your organization. I don't know, even even if he's not serviceable for the next year, 
you know, even if he's not serviceable for the whole playoffs and you just play him in 2023, he's still going to be talked about in Dallas media. He's still going to be talked about national media. Um, so I think it would be a good move to bring OBJ in. But again, I think from a, just a team standpoint, I think that we don't need him. And it's not, I love to have you, love to have you, OBJ. Another one, you and CD Lamb. I mean, that's, that's a great duo. Um, but again, I just, I don't think we need you, but I think you would be a great fit here in Dallas. I mean, we're not the market that New York is, but in terms of NFL and the brand and everything, I think we have that same caliber of star power when it comes to the uh, national media. Um, so, you know, you want you want to go into a place that has great national media coverage. You're on prime time, even when you're beating a team 33, you're beating a team and have 33 points unanswered. You know, I mean, that's like, I mean, that game should have gotten flexed. I, in my humble opinion, I mean, do I love watching the Cowboys on prime time? Absolutely. But that game should have gotten flexed. I, I, I really don't know why that was still on Sunday Night Football. Yeah, especially when the Bengals and Chiefs were playing in the same week. Oh, that that should have been the game. But oh, yeah. Because that Cowboys game was very boring until that fourth quarter. And I would assume most people watching that game probably fell asleep. Because I actually fell asleep watching it. Like, passed out. Like, I woke up and, like, I was like, ah, I'll watch the highlights later. Like, I'll just kind of watch the game film and stuff like that later. Like, I'll watch the quick 45-minute game, like, thing that they do on NFL Plus. Lifesaver. I watched so many 40 of those 45 minute clips where they just cut the game up. I forgot to cut the camera. Where they just cut the game up. And a <laughs> little rough, rough episode here. Where they cut the game up into like 45 minute segments and you like watch like the high, like key plays and stuff like that. Fun to watch those because you don't have to watch. I love special teams, but unless there's like a massive like game changing punt or like game changing special teams play, they don't really put those in. They put in scoring plays, so like that's nice. So you get to see a yeah, if the guy kicks a sixty-two yard field goal, you get to see that. But yeah, that shouldn't have been the game game on prime time. Definitely not. But your Cowboys still winning the Super Bowl? Yes, I mean, I think Eagles are probably pound for pound a better team than us. I mean, they have a better wide receiver core. I mean, they have a better secondary than us. Um, they don't have Michael Parsons. They don't have the number one offense in the NFL. Um, they don't have uh, the best uniforms in the NFL. Um, you know, they don't have the best logo in the NFL. I mean, there's certain things that they just don't have in Philadelphia. Uh, they don't. I mean, so yes, I'm. Even though Philadelphia may be slightly more talented, Dallas is a better team. Our defense is better, and I mean, we have. I think there's so many things that you say the Cowboys. They have the best defensive player in the NFL. They have one of the best defenses. They're number one in offense since Dak is back. The Eagles barely beat us with Cooper Rush. I mean, the score doesn't tell you that, but they barely beat us with Cooper Rush. It was 24-21 before Cooper Rush threw his, like, third interception. Um, so, I mean, it's going to be a good game Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve will tell you who, who's coming out of the NFC. Christmas Eve is going to tell you who's going to come out of the NFC. Um, and it's going to be the Cowboys, I think. Cowboys come out on top. Um, they're going to be playing in Dallas Christmas Eve. It's going to be It's going to be fun. I'm really excited for that game. But, yes, Cowboys are coming out of the NFC. Coming out of the NFC, they're winning that Super Bowl. No matter if you put the Bills up there, the Chiefs, Bengals, I, I don't care who it is. The Steelers, <laughs> like, we don't care. They are hot. We don't care. Yeah. It's the season for miracles. It is December. Season for Miracles, and if you ask Mike Tomlin about December football, I got a little clip I'll play the audio for because I couldn't get the video for the show because I was going to get the copyright strike if I played it. Um, fired me up when he, Mike Tomlin describes December football. Can't wait for you guys to hear it because I doubt you have. But you want to talk about absolute motivation I needed for this week to get through it? That was what I needed to hear. Yeah, he's a great coach. Great coach. Moving on to a team that is in a not great situation. The Baltimore Ravens. They're a little banged up. Lamar Jackson, banged up. Barely beat the Broncos, but a win in the NFL is a win. This is not college football where you have to win with style points. But Lamar Jackson is week to week, likely out this week as Ravens take on my Pittsburgh Steelers. Lamar suffered a sprain in his PCL, which is in his knee area. He'll be out one to three weeks. Um, completely fine with that because I wanted to play Lamar as a Steelers fan. He sucks versus us. We whoop him every time we play him. He's one and two versus us. 
Steelers are Steelers beat him to a pulp every time he play. Uh, Lamar's stats when he plays this, he has a passer rating of 66.7. He's thrown for only 622 yards. He doesn't run the ball on us at all, all that much. He's only thrown four touchdowns. He threw six interceptions versus us. Three of those came in the first time he started against us. It's crazy that he's been a quarterback for that long, and he's only played the Steelers three times. Like, this would have been his fourth meeting with Pittsburgh, like the division rival, and he's not playing us again. But I'm not worried about it because we'll beat on Tyler Huntley too because last time we played Huntley was last year, January 9th. Uh, he had a passer rating of 37.2, 141 yards and two picks. I'm not scared. Uh, and this Steelers defense is maybe improved, maybe better than last year. And they can't throw the football with Huntley in there. I mean, if you ask Michael Robinson of NFL Network, he'll tell you that Tyler Huntley is a better true passer of the football than Lamar Jackson. Michael Robinson, you're a former NFL player. You're dumb. That's a dumb take. There, maybe because there's one or two like f- plays on film in the in the Broncos game where Huntley stood in the pocket and threw a good ball does not mean that's true. A little overreaction by you, but you did say that on a Monday, so I will give you the overreaction Monday pass. That being said, though, Steelers are rolling at a perfect time. Couldn't ask for a better time for Steelers to be playing this level of football that they're playing. Kenny Pickett hasn't thrown an interception in his last four weeks. Since the bye, hasn't thrown a pick. Only two quarterbacks in the NFL right now that have attempted over 120 passes and haven't thrown a pick in the last four weeks. Kenny Pickett and Jared Goff. Not guys you'd expect that to be said about. The, they're 3-1 and one since the bye. Only losses to the Bengals. We weren't good in that game. But the scoreboard says otherwise, so I'll let you look at the scoreboard and make that decision. Um, we're, we needed to go 7-2 and two after the bye, Steelers did, to make the playoffs. We are on that path. We are on that path. We are 3-1. and one. There is only probably one game on our schedule that I think we will lose. Knock on wood. Knock on wood if you're with me, man. Uh, <laughs> but 7-2 and two after the bye, very doable at this point. I would love to even go eight and one. Would love that, but I'll, I'll, I'm still cool with the seven to two path. Mike Tomlin talked about December football. I was asked by Brooke Pryor about December football, and I got a little audio clip here for you guys to hear. What is it about December football that it seems like you get rejuvenated or get another boost? Can you hear that? Love? Man, as a road gets narrow, um, it makes you or it breaks you. Um, you feel that pressure or you apply that pressure. Um, it's my preference to apply it. And, um, and it's my job to make sure our team shares that sentiment. He's a dog. Hallelujah. What a statement. It makes you or it breaks you. Oh, he's built for, he's built for this steel. I don't understand why Steelers don't necessarily like Steelers fans, like talk so much crap on him sometimes. Such a good head coach. His media sessions are absolutely hilarious. They're on Bill Belichick level. Like maybe a step below it of like the like Tomlinisms for people that don't know. A Tomlinism, there's a whole dictionary at this point of things that Tomlin say that no one else has ever said. Yeah. Just like it's awesome. Tomlin's awesome. We have the Ravens this week. We're at Carolina next week, and then Christmas Eve in Pittsburgh versus the Raiders. Oh, give it to me, dude. We're about to go three and zero. In back in three straight weeks, about to go on a five and zero run. Here, down the stretch, I am so excited. But there's some dogs in the AFC. It's teams that make me nervous. Even when they lose, I'm still nervous because they got Ferraris on the outside. Miami, they lost to Mr. Relevant. Hit a, hit a major bump in the road. How do you lose to a guy that was taken last in the draft? Like, you were about to be undrafted, probably get it to go wherever you wanted, and then you literally got screwed and couldn't pick where you wanted to go because it got chosen for you. Cool to be drafted, though. Even cooler to be Mr. Mr. Irrelevant because you're Mr. Irrelevant because normally nothing's going to come of you. Turns out that's not the case. Brock Purdy's a dog. Arizona kid. Arizona high school. I mean, I've seen him play in high school. That kid is amazing. Yes. Like, he was amazing, and I... I'm so pumped that he's getting yeah. shot. He handled he handled the moment fantastically. 
Micah, is there any reason to feel worried about the Dolphins here? I'm not concerned about them. I think they're fine, but any any cause of concern for you? No, no concern. I'm not concerned. It's just uh, unlike Pickett, Tua can't say that he didn't throw any picks. So it's kind of – he was off. He's human. He was off. I mean, it was just a terrible game for him. Uh, was his head okay uh, this game? <laughs> was, he, was he good up there? Uh, Probably not. Should Tua know. retire? Should Tua retire? I mean, I do believe we don't want him to get another head injury. Should Tua just retire? After that, maybe. After after he was throwing, if it was evaluated on one game. Yes. Nah. So it's it's okay. I think even the Forty ers QB. I think that was one of his highest highest. Uh, uh, yards Jimmy, well. Jimmy Jimmy G was playing great until he got hurt, yeah. and then when Brock came in, literally his Brock. first NFL like experience and the throw he's throws he was making was fantastic yeah like for a guy that's seventh round draft pick like yeah. not to you don't want to mess with him but like you watch you saw like that game you saw brock throw the ball like what do you think the 49ers should do moving forward should they just stick with brock i mean they signed josh johnson off the broncos practice squad jimmy g has a he could be back in seven to eight weeks that puts him back at the divisional game in the playoffs or the nfc championship game if they get there, they're going to make it there. Uh, <laughs> at this point, I'm sold that they can make it there. With the dog, with, they got dogs on their team. They have a shot at making it to at least a divisional round. Should they just stick with Brock at this point and roll with him? I say so because he looked a lot better than than their other QB. I mean, whenever he first went out, I mean, whenever he went out there, I mean, his throwing was insane. Um, he was making connections. I mean, really good. So the thing is, I don't know. I mean, he's okay, but like at the same time, their other QB wasn't too bad either. I mean, you got to make what, what's what's good. Who's who's making the be- best connections with their wide receivers? I mean, that's really what it comes down to. So, and, and he was that game. I mean, he was throwing what like two hundred sixty-two yards first half. So, I mean, he was insane. So, well, the cool thing with that team is they have so many weapons. Is that you don't need to do much as a quarterback. <laughs> Like, as long as you can get it in there, those playmakers can make plays for you. That's why I was saying connection. Yeah, it all just comes out yeah. to connection for them. Yeah. And in that in that Shanahan offense, like, if you're a guy that can just put it where Shanahan wants you to put the football, you're going to be fine. So yeah. I think they're going to stick with Purdy. I think they're, they didn't even put in a claim for Baker. Like, you have to all put in your claims at one time, and then, like, that's when the waiver wire claim thing starts. Like, when, like, teams, like, so, like, no one put in a claim for Baker but the Rams. So 49ers didn't even like look at Baker's direction. They were rolling with Brock regardless. I'm excited to see what goes on from here. Moving on from the NFL, though, we don't really talk about college football on this show, but there is some massive stuff going on in college football. The transfer portal and head coach is moving left and right. The biggest move, biggest move. Of the last few years, coaching wise, is Deion Sanders is now a Colorado Buffalo head coach. He's in the Pac-12. How does how does he fit there? What what's the culture going to be like? We already know who the quarterback is. That's Shadur Sanders, his son. Colorado was not good before Deion's gotten there. One and eleven last year. I don't know what their records were previously, but they suck. They've they've always been horrible in our division. Like. I think it took them like six years to beat some teams in the Pac-12, and there's some. I think there's one team that they still haven't beaten. So like they they suck. Like they have they've they've had one draft pick, but Lavisca Chenault was like the only good player that ever came out of Colorado in the past ten years. So yeah, no, they they have not been great. I will say quick shout out to XFL quarterback Stephen Montez. Don't want to disrespect Stephen Montez. That's fair. I forgot about him. Excuse me. Excuse me. Because I do like Stephen Montez. But, again, XFL quarterback, not in the NFL. Easy to forget. Um, they haven't been good since Cordell Stewart was there in the 90s. Cordell Stewart threw a Hail Mary. That's the last time Colorado was good. And this was a Hail Mary-type coaching hire. So, I respect it. Dion said, though, that he's bringing luggage and it's Louie. What a quote. What a quote. <laughs> Told those boys to hit the transfer portal if they're not ready to commit to what he's about to bring into the program. Respect that. Like, people maybe don't like it, but he's telling those boys, like, there's opportunities else out there. Like, you guys ain't good. But if you think you can hang with what I'm about to bring in and what I'm what I'm going to try to build here, stick around because it's going to be a fun ride. 
Colorado is going to be pretty good with him. Like, there's going to be a lot of guys that try to transfer into play there. There's a thousand guys in the transfer portal plus right now. A thousand plus in the transfer portal right now. Like, a lot of guys are going to try to be coming there. Former Alabama running back, and I'm saying that because he's in the portal and he's obviously not going back to Bama. A five-star running back, Trey Sanders, mm. tweeted about Dion getting hired. Like, you got a place for me, boy? Like, he wants to be there. I'd assume way more other people want to be there. Travis Hunter, is he going to follow? That's a great question. Like, are the guys at Jackson State all just about to come rolling into Colorado and it's about to become like... Oh, Flo from Oregon, too. Yes. There's a lot of there's a lot of dudes in the transfer portal that could very easily just go to Colorado. And this team could be a powerhouse team within two to three years just because he's going to recruit five stars. Colorado's got beautiful facilities. Like, he's going to recruit four and five stars. Their facilities are great. He's going to get transfers left and right. The NIL money is going to be obnoxiously, like, large. Like, so much money is going to be flowing through Colorado at this point, NIL-wise. Like, that's the place to be. Now, a lot of people are saying that he, he, you know, Bamani Jones, he... uh, Went on CNN, said some things. He said that he sold a dream and then stole it, something like that along those lines. He walked away from it. Yeah, he, he sold a dream and walked away. Eh. Did he hurt HBCUs by leaving? No. They weren't getting nationally televised games until he got there. They weren't getting talked about by any, any national media until he got there. They weren't getting five-star recruits until he got there. I mean, like, he, they, he was part of bringing that program to the map. And then other NFL other NFL coaches followed him and said, you know what, why, why don't I coach at HBCU? I mean, I don't, I don't think at all that he screwed them over. Like, he brought he put them to the map. I mean, but at a certain point, it's a business. Football is a business. And, uh, you know, Colorado said, hey, we're going to offer you this whopping contract. And you got to take it. Um, so, I mean... Good on you um, for making your own business decision. I mean, I would have liked to see you a little bit longer at Jackson State, see what you could have done over there. But by no means did you screw over HBCUs. I think you put them on the map and you did you did your due diligence. So, yeah, no, I'm, I'm very happy to see, very glad to see what he did over at Jackson State. I'm excited to see what he's going to do at Colorado. Uh, hopefully he uh, doesn't beat uh, Kenny Dillingham. Um, I, I hope we win that first matchup. So we'll, we'll see. Colorado's got some interesting games. I do believe they play Nebraska and Matt Rule's team next year as well. So that'll be a fun game to watch. Like, he's going to land some five stars. Like, there's a lot of guys in the portal. I'll just run through some of the top guys currently in the portal. Like, Devin Leary. He's in the portal right now. He's quarterback at NC State. He's a, He's got, like, two years of eligibility left. Great quarterback. Maybe one of the best players in the portal. Um, there's an offensive lineman from Rhode Island. He's a, a dog. He has offers from everybody. He's one of the hottest names right now on the portal. I would not be shocked. There's been a lot of talk that he's going to go to Penn State. If Dion comes calling, he might go cross country. Like, I wouldn't blame him at all. Like, there's so many talented quarterbacks. Like, inside the top 10, on according to ESPN, there's Devin Leary, DJ Uyunglele, Austin Reed from Western Kentucky. Yes. Like, DJ's going Arizona State. I'm predicting that already. What a prediction that would be. Like Elijah Spencer, he's transferring from Charlotte. He's an animal at a wide receiver position. Uh, Tony Grimes, a corner from North Carolina. What a name this guy has. Storm Duck, uh, corner from North Carolina. These are just some of the names that are in the portal. I recognize some of these names. Very, very talented players. Treshawn Holden, wide receiver from Alabama. Fantastic. Like, there's just so much that's happening in the portal, and it's just, it's wild. It's just absolutely wild the way the portal's gone at this point. But with that being said, I do believe the last thing we have to talk about is the Heisman finalists were announced. Because I'm not happy about it. I'm not happy about it. Nate's not happy about it. Because Hendon Hooker, I don't care if he got hurt, should have been a Heisman finalist. The four finalists are Stetson Bennett from Georgia, C.J. Stroud 
from Ohio State, Max Duggan from TCU, and Caleb Williams out of USC. Those are three dogs and an imposter. Take a guess who the, who the imposter is. Stetson. Absolutely. Stetson is at a program where I think if you put almost any quarterback in the nation on that team, they're doing significantly better or the same. I mean, unless like you're putting Keaton Slovis, um, I don't think he's going to perform all that well because, I mean, he. this is my bias because he sucked at Pitt this year and I'm mad about it. He was supposed to be the guy to come in and, you know, help Pitt do their thing, and he didn't. Um, Could have handed it off to Izzy, Israel Abana Canada, maybe uh, 30 times a game, but we didn't do that. But, you know, it's whatever. Stetson Bennett should not be a Heisman finalist just because he's 25-1 and as a starter and statistically maybe one of the most successful Georgia quarterbacks of all time. The, the person that should have been a Heisman finalist out of Georgia is the tight end. Their tight end should have been the Heisman finalist. He's the he's the piece that that offense runs through. It's a quarterback award, though. He, exactly. Never getting loved like that before. Like we literally listed off all the Heisman. Like Blake Corum should have been there over Stetson Bennett. Anybody else at this point should have been there over Stetson Bennett. And here we are talking about Stetson Bennett, a 25 year old, same age as Lamar Jackson, who won the Heisman in 2016. Let that sink in. Like that's just wild. With that being said, we have anything else to add? I mean, we could talk about we could talk about the Twitter files, but we ain't got the time. No. That 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 needs to show in itself, and we're not political, so you know, not at all. So, with that being said, it's been a fun episode. Um, make sure to subscribe on YouTube if you've watched this far. Much shorter than normal, but then again, there's some changes coming to the show, so we'll. Uh, We'll discuss those at a different point. Maybe if we do an episode next week, we'll talk about that. We're going to hopefully do one next week. It's probably going to be on this level short. Uh, we'll pro- possibly even do address some of the changes that might be coming and even do a uh, Christmas draft if we do one next week. So looking forward to that. We will see you guys next week. Peace.